everyone, welcome back to my channel where we learn to be a better programmer. And in this video, we're going to start to implement some of our moving algorithms. So we're going to implement get valid moves and make move for some of our pieces. Okay, but before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button and so you, you don't miss out on future videos. Okay, so here we are inside of our square class and we need to modify this. So we actually need to have a reference to the piece that is currently occupying or not occupying that square. So what that's gonna look like is we're just gonna say private abstract piece is equal to current piece, or that's the name of the variable. And inside of the reset method, we're gonna say this.currentPiece is equal to null. And we're going to provide some getters and setters for current piece like this. All right, so that's all we really need to do for square. Now let's jump over to board. Okay, so the board is at its basic, we've just created a grid of squares that, um, but there's nothing that to tie this, them together with locations. So we need to create a mapping of location to square. So we're gonna say private, final, um, map of location and square like this location square map and uh, we, because it's final we need to initialize it inside of our constructor so we say location square map is equal to new hash map like this and then at this line we're going to say location square map dot put um, new square dot get location and then new square like this all right, so that's how we're able to create that mapping of a location to a particular square. All right, and then lastly, we just need to have a getter for this uh, map. So we're gonna say public map of location square, oops, square um, is say get location square map. And we're just gonna say return uh, location square map like this. Awesome. So that's all we needed to do to modify board for right now. So let's jump over to the common di directory where we actually need to create a new Java class and we're going to call it location factory. So this is going to be a little bit of a convenience uh, method that we're uh, convenience class that we're going to use. So this factory is just going to create locations for us given a current location, a file offset and a rank offset. Okay. So we need to get a reference to the enumeration of the file class uh, and its values. So what we're going to do is we're going to say private fi static final file files is equal to file dot values like this. And then we're going to have a method. We're going to have to say public static uh, location uh, build. And this is going to take in a location, so current and then integer uh, file offset and then integer rank offset like this and now we need to calculate where the current location is on in terms of the file so we're going to say integer current file is equal to current dot get file dot ordinal. So what this does is it basically gives us the integer location of the enumeration. That makes sense. All right. So now we're just going to say return new location of current dot get file dot, oh, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. So what we're going to say, so now what we're going to say is we're going to say is return new location of uh, files of current file plus file offset comma and then we're just going to say current dot get rank plus rank offset like this all right so that's pretty straightforward we're just creating a location given a current location a file offset and a rank offset all right so now let's jump over to pawn okay so the pawn is uh, one of the most basic pieces within chess. So there's eight pawns and they have some special behavior. So pawns can only move two squares uh, on their first move. 
and they can only move diagonally if there's a piece to capture on um, one rank up and either on the left or right hand side. Okay, so what this is, what we're going to do to track this is we're going to say private boolean is first move is equal to true by default. And so inside of this get valid moves method, we're just going to say list of locations uh, move candidates is equal to collections dot empty list. So we just make it an empty list by default. And then what we're going to say is if is first move, then we're just going to move candidates dot add new location of this dot get current square dot uh, get location comma zero because we're on the same file and then we go up one rank like this. Uh, I'm sorry, whoops, actually, I meant to call the location factory. So say location factory dot build, and then we're just going to say this dot get current square dot get location, comma, zero, comma, one, and then we're just going to say yank that and, and again, and we're just going to say two. So those are our two move candidates. Um, and I'll just make this a little bit easier to read by moving that down one line like this. All right, so those are our two move candidates if we're on the first move. So we're just gonna say return move candidates like this. Otherwise, we're not on the first move. So it gets a little bit more complicated. So actually, so what we can do is we can move this outside of this if statement. And we're just going to say no matter what, a pawn can always move forward by one move. Um, and we'll, so the way this is going to work is that we're going to create all the possible moves that this pawn can make and then create our filtering logic. Okay? So now, um, okay, so this is if our first, we have our, if, if the first, we're on our first move, and now we need to handle if we're not on our first move. So that means we can either cap, we can capture on the left hand side or the right hand side. Okay, so now we're just going to say um, move candidates dot add new or location factory dot build this dot get current square dot get location uh, comma the file offset is one and then the rank offset is also one. Okay, and <clears throat> excuse me. So now the rank offset stays as one, but this file offset becomes minus one. All right. So actually, I'm going to do a quick little bit of refactoring because I I, I don't want to have to keep typing this. So what I'm going to say is um, uh, this dot get. Uh, sorry. Uh, location current is equal to this dot gets current square dot get location like that and I'm just gonna refactor and say current and current and current and current like this all right so now we have a move that can a pawn that can either move forward by one, move forward to the left by one, and, or move forward to the right by one. Okay, so now we need to check if all of these moves are valid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say move candidates dot stream dot filter, and then we're just going to say candidate like this, and then inside of this lambda function, what we're going to say is if uh, we want to return true if board dot get location square map dot contains candidate. Alright, so, um, so what this is basically doing, we're basically saying uh, filter the moves that are not valid, that aren't a part of the board. So for example, if a pawn is on the A file and we want to try to capture to the left, that doesn't make sense. There's no file to the left of A. So it would filter that out. So what I'm going to 
return is a list of of locations and then we're going to call this um, uh, valid moves okay and the way we handle this is we say collectors dot to list like that all right and we can even make this a little bit more simple by replacing it with a lambda and making our lives a little bit more simple okay so that's our valid move so we basically ensure that every move that remains in this valid moves list is in fact on the board all right Re so i did a bit of refactoring here so i just said board dot get location square map and i just stored that in a variable called square map and then the filter method can re be replaced by a method reference lambda um, we were basically saying if the square map contains the key, keep it, and then we're collecting that into a list. All right, so all this basically does is just ensures that the valid moves uh, list only contains um, squares and locations that map to actual board locations, okay? So now we need to actually uh, handle the logic of if the pawn is blocked by another piece right so if the location inside of this valid moves array is, is occupied then we need to ensure that the, if it one um, we need to ensure that if the pawn or if the if the piece that is there is opposite color if it is then we can say all right we can capture it if it's a capture move right so we need to verify that the file offset is not zero and then if there's a piece directly in front of it then we definitely don't want to keep it because that pe the pawn definitely couldn't move all right so look i'm going to show you what this looks like okay so if we say valid we're going to say return valid moves dot stream dot filter and so we're going to say a candidate whoops candidate and then, so what we need to do is we need to make sure that the candidate move, the piece at the candidate move is not the piece color. And we need to verify that um, the, there's no piece in front of, directly in front of the pawn, okay? So if candidate, dot get file uh, dot equals this dot get uh, current square dot get location dot get file so if the candidate move file location is equal to the current candidate um, and this or and then and then uh, we get square map dot get candidate dot is occupied, then we just return false. All right, so I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. Uh, let me just say return false. Otherwise, um, we need an else statement there. So otherwise, um, then we're not on the same file so we just need to verify that we get the piece at that square is not equal to this current piece's piece color so we need to verify uh, return candidate dot get um, sorry so I'm gonna say square map dot get candidate dot get current piece dot piece color dot equals this dot get piece color. So basically we want, and I'll just throw a not in front of this. So all we're saying is we want to ensure that the candidate square dot get current piece dot piece color is not equal to the current piece color, which means that we can capture. All right. So that's, uh, sorry, dot collect to list like this all right so this is what allows us to this is how we're filtering out all of, so what we're basically doing is we're generating all possible moves and then filtering out the moves that aren't even on the board and then we're filtering out based on a pieces specific move logic like this all right 
So that's that's all we actually need to do for pawn. And I'm going to be doing something similar for the remaining uh, remainder of the pieces. Um, and I'll just time lapse through that. Okay, so with that, I created uh, the moves for uh, a knight. Okay, so let's take a look and see, just summarize what I did. Okay, so we have a rook, and then I have two methods, get file candidates and get rank candidates. So the rook can move only up and down and uh, laterally. So what that allows us to do is keep the offsets fixed based on which at wherever we uh, want to go okay so I created these two methods get file candidates and get rank candidates so in get rank candidates what we're doing is we're basically saying uh, keep the file fixed but um, add an offset on each iteration of the loop all right and then inside of this loop it says if it's occupied then we check if the piece that it's occupying that square is that same color if it's not if it is we break out of the loop if it's not we add that candidate to the list and then break because we can't move past another piece and then if it's not occupied we just add it okay and then we update next to include uh, the new current being next and then the current file and then adding in that new offset and we do essentially the same thing with uh, get file candidates, but we keep the rank constant. All right, and then we do something similar for the bishop, um, but the bishop is different in that um, uh, there's there's four types of moves that it can make, um, keeping the rank offset the same and the file. So if if the bishop moves up and to the right, up and to the left down into the left and down into the right so there's there's the four uh, candidates there um, and then what we can do is we said as we said before there's nothing really special that we have to do for the queen we just say um, call get move candidates on the bishop and the rook move i face that gets passed in and just pass in the current queen square and then we do the same for the king um, but, or I'm sorry, so we do the same for the king, but we just have to make sure that the king can only move one space. So we uh, filter out all the candidates that are more than one square away um, from, from, from the current square. All right, so I hope this kind of really helps you kind of understand um, what it takes to build out these pieces. Um, this isn't really applicable in terms of object-oriented design principles, but uh, you get the idea here. Typically what we can do, actually what we can do, we have a little bit of repeated code. We have this get moves um, function here uh, that takes in an offset and a rank offset. We could actually probably put this inside of our uh, interface or our abstract class, abstract piece, um, and then just uh, override that implementation and provide an implementation here. Um, but you know we, that's just a simple design choice. Instead, we can just implement uh, a custom method here, even though that the method is called pro the method is only called inside of each inside of this class. So it doesn't really make sense to um, include it elsewhere. And we might want special functionality um, inside of this class. All right. So uh, in the next video, we're pro we're going to uh, kind of start to tie this all together. Um, inside of our board, we're going to initialize our board with our pieces uh, that we expect um, to have uh, on those starting squares. And then we're going to um, print out the board using this game class um, that uh, is going to be is going to handle all the running of the game and the game logic. All right, so if you like the video, please feel free to hit that like button uh, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks.